You gotta admit that's a pretty good looking radio. G'day, Stu here from UAV Futures, and today, well, we're going to be looking at pretty much this beautiful looking radio right here. I'm going to flash some pictures on the screen. This thing looks like a work of art, and hopefully, it's going to have some functions as well. So, what this video is, this is the new look, our first look, X10, the Horus from FreeSky. And FreeSky make arguably the most popular radio systems out there. The Tyrannus is probably the most popular radio system for all drone racing pilots. So, what we're going to be doing, we're going to be sticking this bad boy on the bench, having a bit of a quick squiz, looking at what changed, what's new and is this going to be the right radio for you? Anyway, enough rambling, let's stick it on the bench and get started. Alrighty, so here it is on the bench and I guess the first part I want to do, this thing it really does feel like it's high quality in your hands. Compared to some of the other radios, this thing feels like it's got a little bit of weight, not too much, but it feels like it's definitely a quality radio. It feels very, very nice in your hands. It's got some rubberized grips on the side and uh, just the overall finish of everything on here. Not only does it look great, but you can tell it's definitely a very, very well made radio. Now what I want to do, we're going to be comparing it a little bit to the QX7, also the Turnergy Evolution, so let's stick it on the scales, find out how much it weighs. Tearing off my scales here, hopefully you guys can see that, putting it on here, this thing, it's coming in at about 990 grams, so pretty much one kilo. If we compare that to something like the lighter QX7, that's coming in at 850 grams. They have about the same size battery in there. This one's battery is built internally, and then we'll put it over. Let's have a look at the Turnergy Evolution. That's coming in at three, around 350 grams. So this radio is far lighter, but you can see it's also a lot smaller. Now we're gonna be making a few comparisons between these two throughout this video, because you can see they even look very similar, but let's get this radio out of the way. So this is the uh, Turnergy Evolution, and I flew this radio for over one year. I really liked how this thing felt in my hands. That was the one reason why I flew it, but I've been getting a few fail safes lately, so I am going to be making the switch back to FreeSky. I've just got to find out what is the right FreeSky radio for me, and the best thing about FreeSky, they have an unbelievable RF link. So arguably, I would say one of the best RF links in the biz, so they go an absolutely astonishing long way, and you get minimum fail safes with this. That's pretty much a, like a agreed, something the multi-copter community can definitely agree on. The FreeSky radio links are definitely very, very strong. Now, speaking of that radio link inside here, they're meant to have a new lower latency module. It's an IXJT RF module. Look, I don't have the tools or anything like that to sort of do those tests. You're just gonna have to take my word for it. I'll link to the site below where they've got all the stats. So even though this is a first look video, if you wanna do a whole bunch more reading on all these sorts of parts, I'll put some links down below if you wanna go in and find out exactly the nitty gritty, all the uh, scientific research about all those sorts of things. Now, speaking of the radio link, look, I started to fly on the original X9D Plus. So uh, I've got a big place in my heart for Free Sky, even though I was a Way of flying this bad boy for about a year, I think I'm going to come back and start flying Free Sky again. Now, let's jump in and have a bit of a look at some of the features, some of the components on this radio. So, right in the get that out of the way. So right smack bang in the middle, you can see we've got two hall center gimbals here. Now speaking of the X10, there's also a special edition. So the X10S, that one comes with like some 10 ball bearing gimbals. These ones, these are just the hall effect gimbals. These are still amazing gimbals. These are actually upgraded gimbals to what's in the Tyrannus QX7, but you can actually do this upgrade yourself. And I've got a little video how to put these gimbals in if you've got one of the cheaper QX7. So I'll leave a little link up here if you want to check that out. But these are really, really good gimbals. They made a big impact. And that was one of the biggest complaints about the first Tyrannus systems and uh, they people didn't like the gimbals they felt a bit cheaper in there here in the Horus we've got these boy bad boys straight off the bat and there's even the option to upgrade I'll flash a picture on the screen if you want to look at some of those metal ball bearing gimbals they're fully CNC now as far as all the little knobs switches and dials we've got two sliders on the outside across the top right here we've got four three position switches we've got a couple of different pots here these two are free to move this one has absolutely no notches this one's got one notch in the center and this one's got several notches throughout it so you can sort of, uh, I think it's five notches. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, so that one's got five notches, so you know, it's nice that you've got those options, none, five, or uh, just one in the middle. On the top right here, you've got some two, that's another three position switch, three position switch, momentary switch, and then this one's just a two position switch. So this one has switches galore, as well as all your trims and all that sort of jazz. This thing has switches coming out the wazoo. I don't really think that's good for uh, drone pilots, because most drone pilots don't really use that many things. I know for me, I like an arm switch, so you might have one arm switch, you might have a buzzer switch, and then some people might have like a mode switch, or you know if you want to fly angle mode or something like that other than that 
you don't really need too much more when you're doing FPV drone racing. Now one of the big features of this radio, you'll notice I haven't spoken about it yet, is this bad boy right here. This is a really big, bright, coloured screen. So if I turn my radio on here, you can see just how good this looks. Alrighty. Thank you very much, young lady. Throttle warning. Oh. Switch warning. It is going to give you a whole bunch of warnings. So you can see I've turned the screen on here. Have a look how good that looks. So uh, it is an absolutely beautiful screen. It's going to make, make navigating your menus very, very easy. And if you're setting up wings or some things like that where you're looking at your model all the time, this screen is going to be fantastic. It can record data on the fly. It can do a whole bunch of really amazing stuff. This is a very, very powerful radio. But is that part going to be useful? I'm going to say for a drone pilot, not really, because once you've got your goggles down, you don't see anything besides what the quad is seeing. So this screen isn't really going to be useful and it's going to drain the battery a little bit. So I would recommend if you could turn the screen off when you're flying around, it's going to save a ton of battery because for most drone pilots, it looks beautiful. I really like it and it's fantastic when you're setting up the menu. But once you've done that, you're not really in the menu too much more and you're more focused on your flying. Now to navigate, you've got this beautiful scroll wheel right here. We can see if we can go in, go into a menu. You can see you can navigate using this scroll wheel right here. Very, very easy. That's the same as what was on the QX7. Uh, I would prefer, actually, if this screen was a touch screen because I found the touch screen to be quite useful when I was flying around with this. So it's interesting they haven't chosen to put a touch screen in the middle. I don't know why that is. One cool feature that I do like, to turn this radio off, you actually need to put a confirm button. So you're not going to be accidentally turning it off. You need to hold the button down and then you need to go over and actually confirm it using this button. So I think that's a nice little feature to add. Over here, this is where we've got our little battery port and this part is a little sore point for me. Uh, you've also got your audio jacks and all that sort of jazz. On the underneath you've got your wireless trainer port. Over here, let's have a look at this bad boy. This is pretty important. This is one of the best things. We have the JR module. So that's been in all the Tyrannus and the Horus radios so far. And the beauty of this bad boy is if you fly something that's not on the Free Sky protocol, you can put a different module in there. You can get you can put some things in like a crossfire module, which means you can get this radio talking with other radio systems. So not just Free Sky stuff. So right here, look, I've got a TBS crossfire. All you need to do, put that in the back, slide that in, we're ready to rock and roll. Now I mentioned this before, this is a little charging port, so you've got a little USB-C port here. You think that's great, plug that into your computer. You're ready to rock and roll because inside here you've got a 2600 uh, milliamp hour battery. But it's a lithium ion battery and what that means, that's going to be a massive pain to charge because you can't just plug it in like this. You need this little adapter. So what this adapter does, it slides into the side and then you plug it into the wall. So, you know, fair enough, but I think that's totally useless. If you lose this, there's gonna be no way you can charge your battery without taking your radio apart and charging it. It's gonna be very, very difficult. And the reason that's also annoying because you notice there's no little slider like there is on this bad boy right here. So if your battery gets flat, you can simply pop the case off, change your battery, you know, or we'll put on the charger easily. This bad boy, it's not gonna be charging anytime soon, especially if you've lost this. So uh, I'm not really a fan that they have an internal unremovable battery that you need this special little charger part for the Horus. I think that part's a little bit of a letdown. Now this also has a wireless training port and that doesn't mean much to drone racing pilots because we're pretty used to crashing. But back in the day, what used to happen, people would connect two radios someone would be flying around especially if you're flying like fixed winged or something like that one person was like the trainee and one person was i guess the instructor the instructor could always take control if things got a bit too scary and that's how a lot of people learn to fly this one has that option but it's done wirelessly which is actually really really cool so no longer do you need like a cable tethering things together or anything like that uh, on the top here you can see we have a detachable antenna and that is great because a lot of people i know they modded out their tr traditional tyrannuses they put on an aftermarket antenna if they want to get even more range but the problem with this bad boy if you're going to put on a different antenna part it's not going to actually be able to slide in because it's not re it's a bit recessed in here and unless you sort of grind this out drill it out a little bit you're not going to be able to do that over this side you've got your earphone jack if that's what you're interested in and then flipping it over the back you've also got your usb port all that sort of jazz and uh the usb port's great if you want to plug it into the sim sims are some of the best things that you can use especially when you're flying fpb drone racing sims help so much just to get a feel of sticks and all that sort of jazz but I do wish that it was underneath because sometimes like it is on the QX7 because 
This makes it much easier when you're plugging in your USB. You can fly around, you can sit your radio down. This bad boy, if you put it down, it's gonna be sort of putting some pressure on the back. So I wish it was coming out the side or out the bottom or something that, you know, just somewhere that wasn't out the back of the radio. Now look, as far as the design goes, uh, I would say I like what they've done with this radio. The original, the X12 Horus, was way too big with that big part up the front. I know a lot of people didn't like that. They've shrunk this down. I think that's a really good choice. Moving the screen to the middle, everything about this radio, it's pretty compact especially when you compare it to something like this bad boy. They're about the same size. This, one's, this one is a little bit wider, so I think this one might be suited a little bit more to maybe some of those pinching pilots out there. I know I fly with my thumbs, but it still doesn't feel any different, I guess, when I'm going to the extremities of the stick. It's definitely not feeling too wide or anything like that. Now, the quality of this thing, I think this thing is absolutely top-notch for the money that you pay. It feels amazing in your hand. The finish on this thing feels absolutely incredible. I'm a massive fan. Everything on here looks nice, bright, shiny. It's a very, very good looking radio, especially with that screen. That sounds so weird saying a good looking radio, but especially with that screen, I really think the quality of this thing is fantastic. And as far as the RF link goes, I think FreeSky have nailed it. They have got the best radio link in the biz. And on top of that, look, if you want even better gimbals, you can upgrade to the X10S to get the even better stuff. So quality, definitely. You are paying a little bit more for it, but for what you get, it's definitely way cheaper than some of the other radios out there. And in the past, radios used to be so expensive. The amount of technology packed in here, the finish and the quality, is absolutely incredible, you know, when you're looking at the price of the three or four hundred dollar radio that you've got. Alrighty, so let's talk the pros and cons. So obviously, you know, the quality is a massive pro. The RF link that you got, it's got tons of features, so much technology packed in here. I think it's a great radio. As far as the cons go, I guess the only two that I can really think of a little bit, or besides the USB, if you want to move that. Number one, you know, I guess this is a pro and a con. That antenna there, you can detach it, but it's also going to make it difficult for aftermarket antennas. And number two, this one really is a con. This charging port, this charging charging piece that's going to be a massive pain you know you've really got to carry that around with you if you take this out in the field and you're flying all day you know and you get a flat radio you're out of luck you're not going to be flying anymore because it's very very difficult to change i would like it if they just had a changeable battery right yeah there it is there's my review of the horus x10 and do i think this is the right drone radio for everybody definitely not it is a little bit bigger it's a little bit more expensive and it probably offers too many features than what us fpv drone racing pilots need now if you're right into telemetry logging some data you really want a high quality radio. This thing has a ton of functions and you're gonna be flying some things like FPV wings and some other models around. I think this is a fantastic price point. I mean, the amount of technology packed in here and just how cheap it is for what it does because it's so powerful. This thing would have been worth like a gazillion dollars back in the day and it's crazy to see how much the prices have come down. So is it for just FPV drone racing pilots? I'd say no, it's probably too feature packed, but if you wanna do more stuff with more models, I definitely think this one's a great choice. Now look, it's not perfect. I don't like it how it's got an internal built battery because I worry with this big bright screen how long is that going to last and if you want to charge this out in the field you're definitely going to be out of luck because if you lose that little part that you plug in you've got no other way to charge it so that part's a little bit frustrating I like how they've made it so you can put on a different antenna but you do need to put some little mods if you want to put some of those longer range antennas on here I like how it comes with the gimbals and I guess the even the upgraded ones you've got some pretty cool gimbals even better than these hole sensor ones and yeah overall I think it's definitely a pretty cool radio but what do you guys think drop some comments down below would you fly with this radio do you think it's better or worth it over something like the qx7 because i know that's a very popular radio out there subscribe for more fpv related content and as always happy flying Alrighty, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that video definitely subscribe if you're new to the channel and check out these videos and i'm also going to leave a little link here to my patreon page because i've got some fantastic patreon supporters and i like to give back to them as well so if you want to join the uav futures family there's things like bonus velcro straps little bundles of fpv goodies and things like that that also get sent out anyway Happy flying.